Hey everybody, so the latest version of MX Mix just came out. It is version 2.3. It's not quite a full-fledged app yet. I, this is, I say this every time we do a video, um, but they did add some functionality um, that's pretty significant, wasn't there before, and makes this a lot more usable than the previous version. So we're gonna have a look at those things and we're gonna do it right now. Let's go! <laughs> So here are the notes from the developer about uh, this latest release and what we have to look at. So for our Xair devices, they've added um, the input and output routing configuration. Great. It's not everything we need, but it's a good step. And for X32, you have a whole bunch of your routing options now available, which is awesome. So we're going to look at both those things, but we're going to start with uh, the XR mixers first. So let's open up my 18. And I've also got the desktop software open so we can see, you know, things that are, are different or missing or what have you. So here's the layout. Looks just like it did before. Um, what we have now is routing. So great. We have all our inputs here that we can route and we have our main output routing. Unfortunately, if we have a look at the in-out routing on the desktop software, what we are still missing is the USB returns, the USB sends, our ultranet, and our aux out. Now, does this stop you from using this right now? Not really. Um, in a typical basic situation where you've just got this box on stage and you're just doing a live event, you're probably not looking at your USB returns. You're probably not doing anything with your USB sends. And if you don't have monitors uh, with ultranet, um, like if you're not using personal mixers, then you're probably not using the ultranet at all. Um, Oxo, it's good to have this, but unless you've done something very specific, this typically doesn't change in a regular setup. You're not changing your tap point here. You're not changing whether or not it's pre or post. That's all stuff you change in the mixer on the actual buses themselves or on the channels themselves. You don't usually change this routing unless it's something really specific. So we've got our input routing and we have our main output routing. Great, that makes it more usable than it was before. Some key elements still missing, but it's a good step in the right direction. Um, outside of that, you know, we have our home, our effects, our meters, our recorder, which is great to have. Again, our routing. Um, what we are still missing though is things like our setup window. We can't go into setup or layout or do anything like that, which means if you need to initialize your mixer, which is set it back to a point of, of no information, you're going to have to have something else with you, a laptop, a desktop, or on your iPad if you are using um, the Xair Edit and it, you're actually able to run it because as we know, it's not working for a lot of new iPads. Check out this video that I'm linking. Um, if you have that available to you, you definitely are gonna wanna have it with you. Um, I'll just show you, for instance, if I wanna initialize the mixer, great. I can do that right here. You see it's setting my console back to zero. There's no information. I don't have a way to do that here anywhere in um, MX Mix yet. So it's not perfect. It's much more usable than it was before. You could potentially run a show with this. My suggestion is not to rely on it solely as your interface. If you are going to try and run a show, please have a laptop or some other computer with the desktop software on it. And I'm making that my recommendation um, overall, instead of relying on the Xair Edit, the old app as well, just because it is having problems with newer iPads. So I really don't want anybody relying on it at this point. Um, and this obviously is not full fledged. So please, if you are going to run a show, really consider having a laptop with you with the desktop software, which runs perfectly. It's a good thing to have with you just in case. You can also get into your um, other buses here, so bus one, two, three, four, five, and six, instead of just your main out. Uh, what it doesn't let you into here is your effect sends. You have your effect returns, which is great, but you have no way to get signal to your effect sends. I'll also say, 
it's probably not a good idea to rely on MX Mix because it's still technically in a beta. It's a public beta, but it's a beta nonetheless. You can see here at the top right, there's actually a picture of a bug and that's for reporting bugs. If I hit that, it's gonna take me to a website, um, part of the Behringer uh, website where you can report bugs directly about this app. So just knowing that we're still in potentially a buggy application with a reporting scenario right in the app itself tells you you probably shouldn't rely on this for running a show. So now that we've had a look at that, I'm going to exit out of my Xair and we're going to go into M32, which I happen to have here. M32, X32, if you didn't already know, identical function software is all the same. So anything you see in here for the M32 is going to apply to the X32 as well. Loading is a little slow as you can see. Um, there's a lot more parameters to pass along, but I'm on a pretty robust home network here. My iPad is wireless, so keep that in mind. Um, so when it comes to routing for the M32, we have a lot more here available than we did for the Xair. Um, you can see we've got our inputs, our AES50, our cards, our XLR, our, X, um, our outputs 1 to 16, our aux outs, and our ultranet. We have the ability to change all of that. So that's huge. It looks like they've put a lot more focus on um, churning out options for the X32 and M32 line of mixers instead of the um, XR line of mixers, which I guess I understand, even though the XR mixers are very popular. But if you do have a 32, you've got a lot more options for actually running a show. Now, when we look at our output buses, we have our main outs, all of our mix buses, and our effects. So you can actually send stuff to your effects and hit your effects returns and be able to bring those back. So it's a lot more functional in this mixer than it is in the XR version of the mixers. Once again, highly recommend if you only have like a rack version of the 32, you're probably gonna wanna have um, desktop software here with you as well. So in fact, I'm just gonna open up the 32 software just so we can see. Um, and just so you can see if mix bus one, let's, let's go to mix bus one here and oops, let's readjust this size. You should be able to see me sending channel one to the mix bus there. And if I go to my effects bus, uh, let's look at it here. We can see that, yep, I can affect what's going to the effects bus. So again, not bad. Step in the right direction, definitely. But as I, I was saying, don't rely on this solely to run a show. If you've just got a rack version, please have desktop software there with you um, or have the uh, M32 edit version of the software um, M32 mix or the X32 mix so that you have another way to get into the mixer and control it instead of just having to rely on the physical controls on the rack. Obviously, if you've got a full-fledged mixer with um, faders like the M32 Live or the full M32 or the X32 uh, producer or you know the full X32, you're covered. You don't need to worry about desktop software unless you really need it for something specific. Um, anyway, still in beta for the 32 line and for the XR line. Not fully functional. I don't know what the release date is going to be for the full-fledged app, but at least we're getting a lot closer. So that's it. Today's date is Thursday, the 16th of October. I believe this just came out today, potentially yesterday. Um, I'm not really sure, but it's brand new. So please get into it, play around, see what it can do, see what it can't do, find the bugs, report them. If we're all doing that, maybe it'll speed up this process and we can finally get a full-fledged release of this app out for everybody to use. We can stop relying on the old app and people who are running into issues running that old app can finally relax. Um, obviously, there's Mixing Station out there, so technically you can relax already if you're using Mixing Station, but I know a lot of people aren't too crazy about that software. 
you know, no judgment here. It's good for some people, not so great for others. Totally your choice. But yeah, report the bugs, test the software, see what it can do for you and what it can't. Don't rely on it. Have a backup just in case. That's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time here on Cookies. Bye, everybody.